I'm here with Dr. Vivian Jabri. She's a professor at the Department of War Studies at King's College London. A very warm welcome from the German Development Institute. Professor Jabri, today you worked with the participants of the Global Governance School as part of the program Managing Global Governance, which is implemented jointly by the German Development Institute and GIZ. What do you see as the major contribution of the MGG program? I think at least my experience of it today has been that there is a wonderful opportunity for dialogue with representatives of other societies and especially of, of these emerging countries. So in that sense, it's a very, very valuable experience. It's very interesting to hear other people's voices and other interpretations of what is going on in global politics. We're always very good at telling people what to do. It's salutary for us to hear other opinions. So in that sense, it's, it's very, very useful indeed, but especially the concentration on global governance. This is a concept that is now extremely important in international relations, and we can only build the institutions that are requisite of this thing we call global governance if we indeed hold such a dialogue. So I think this context is, is exceptionally important. Uh, your lecture today at the Global Governance School was on responsibility to protect. With this doctrine, the member states of the United Nations declared their willingness to take collective action in case a nation state is not willing to protect its population. To what extent does the responsibility to protect norm challenge the traditional understanding of sovereignty as the basic concept underpinning international relations today. We've seen from the discussion today that actually this idea of responsibility to protect is quite a problematic one. It's, it's a rather contested one. So even though there is an emerging consensus within the UN system around the discourse of the responsibility to protect, nevertheless, it is quite a controversial uh, concept. Why is it controversial? It's because it assumes a shifting understanding of the notion of sovereignty. Sovereignty traditionally is understood as political authority. It's also understood in relation to the state, the bounded political community. When sovereignty shifts towards its understanding as responsibility, so sovereignty as responsibility, that has very significant consequences for our settled understandings of what the international means as a distinctive location of politics. So the idea of a responsibility to protect indeed does challenge traditional notions of sovereignty, but in so challenging, it actually brings up all sorts of rather problematic uh, issues. The UN Security Council Resolution 1973 directly refers to the responsibility to protect norm. In view of the controversy around the current airstrikes against the Gaddafi regime in Libya, do you think this norm is an effective and legitimate instrument for the international community to prevent crimes against civilians? Because it's subject to controversy, and because it's subject to all sorts of questions relating to the legitimacy of decisions and the legitimacy of those conducting the intervention, then it's, it's, a, problematic, uh, it's a problematic idea. And that's irrespective of the particular case of Libya. And of course, the particular case of Libya, which exercises all of us at, at the moment, raises its own very particular questions. So the resolution 1973 refers to the policing of a no-fly zone, but that seems to have crept up into other uh, targets, other activities that are suggestive much more of regime change than the policing of a no-fly zone. The Arab League agreed to the former, actually, and not to the latter. So uh, the question of the legitimacy of, of the intervention has come up because of how the intervention ha has developed over the past few uh, weeks and, and, and days of, of the intervention. 
In light of the situation in Syria, where the Assad regime is waging war against its own people, in your opinion, does the UN Security Council has a responsibility to protect? The situation in Syria is as complex, if not more so, than the situation in Libya. It's very difficult at the moment to discern the if you like, the political actors who are the, to answer this question, who are the political actors involved? Of course, there is the regime is engaged in, in, in violence. However, there are elements of the, of the opposition that are also engaged in violence. So how is an international community to respond to such a, to such a context? There is that question which is very specifically relating to Syria, but also very specifically relating to Libya as well. However, in my opinion, there's the wider question in relation to how we respond to a very positive occurrence in present-day global politics, namely the Arab Spring. Do we allow communities in the Middle East to develop their own structures and their own ideas relating to what constitutes legitimacy? Or do we intervene in those communities and in a, in a way actually steal that spring from them? So that's how I would respond to your questions. Professor Jabri, thank you so much for joining us today here at the German Development Institute in Bonn.